Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we have a question from Dale in Homewood, Alabama. Dale asked, could you explain bracketing? Well, absolutely, Dale, no problem. Well, this question actually came up a few times after last week's episode about HDR photography. I think I mentioned it there. And uh, in simple terms, bracketing is just a quick way to take a series of photos. The first one that is properly exposed and then one that is overexposed and then another one that's underexposed. And you can do that by a specific amount. Usually it's a full stop, but you can bracket images in as little as third stops. So it's a little underexposed by a third or overexposed by a third or all the way up to uh, two or three stops. It depends really on your camera and how you're doing this. Um, the cool thing is in recent years, bracketing has been used for creating HDR images. And I think that's why it came up in last week's episode. But there are other reasons that you can bracket your photos. Uh, specifically, you might find yourself in a situation where you're really unsure of the exposure and you have to make sure that you get a great exposure, maybe at a graduation or something like that where you only have one shot to get the photo and you need to make sure it is right. Or maybe you're out shooting some scenic photography and you're really sort of just unsure of exactly what you should do. Well, you can bracket those exposures and then when you get to your post-production, you have a lot of different options for processing. And the cool thing is bracketing, it's not just used for exposure. You can use bracketing to control your flash and you can bracket focus and even white balance. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about some specific types of bracketing. We're going to talk about exposure bracketing, flash exposure bracketing, and focus bracketing. So to do that, we're going to head right over to the studio and start by looking at exposure bracketing. All right, well, let's start with exposure bracketing. And again, exposure bracketing allows you to take one shot that is the right exposure and then one that is overexposed and one that's underexposed. And that one that's the right exposure might be a little off and that's the reason why you're bracketing in the first place. So let's get started. What I'm doing here is I've got a Canon 5D Mark II and I wanna show you how to set things up on a Canon and then we'll show you how to do that on a Nikon. And because every camera is a little bit different, you'll need to look at your user manual to see the specific steps for your camera. But they're gonna be very similar to what we're doing now. So let's go in here. I'm gonna get, get my, um, my Canon 5D Mark II and I have this set in aperture priority mode. And on the back here, I'm going into the menu. There's something that says exposure comp slash auto exposure bracketing, AEB. And so when I see that, I'm going to push the uh, set button on my camera and then I can roll this front dial and when I do that, you can see on the bottom here that I have this bracketing feature and I can tell it how much to under and overexpose. So here's a third stop over and under, two thirds, a full stop, all the way up to two stops. So I'm gonna set it at two stops just to make sure that we have a really dramatic difference. Once I have that in there, I'm going to push the set button and my camera now is set up to take three shots. And so I'll take the first shot. So I'm gonna take a picture of this stuff bite here. Now that first shot is exposed correctly. The next shot I take, well that one is underexposed by two stops. One more shot and I have that overexposed. And now as long as I have bracketing set up, that's what will happen every three shots. So again, exposed correctly. This one's underexposed. That one is overexposed and it'll just keep repeating that. Now if I wanna turn that off, I need to go back into the menu, go into the exposure compensation, auto exposure bracketing and then turn that all the way so it's off, hit set, and now I can just keep taking pictures. And so that's how you do the exposure bracketing on a Canon, and specific to your camera, make sure you look at your user manual. Let's look how we do that exact same thing on a Nikon. Now the Nikon is a little bit different. Most Nikons have a bracketing button on the side, and it works a little bit differently. So what we'll do is I'm gonna throw this on the tripod really fast. I'm gonna go into the menu setting, and then on the little pencil icon, I can go down to E on this camera. This is a D90. And there's something that says bracketing flash. So I wanna go into that by uh, hitting OK. And then if I go down, it has this little thing that says uh, auto bracketing set. And I have a bunch of choices there. So I'll go into that menu and I can say I want the uh, auto exposure and flash to bracket. In other words, if I have a flash on this camera, well, the auto exposure and the flash are both gonna get brighter and darker to over and underexpose. I can say, you know what, I just want the auto exposure, leave the flash alone, just the auto exposure, change that. I can say just the flash, 
and I can do white balance bracketing and some other types of bracketing on this camera as well. We're gonna stick to auto exposure only for right now to match what we did with the Canon. So I'll say okay, and now what I can do is I can grab my camera and I can push this bracketing button. And when I do, on the top of my camera, I've got some little readouts. Now with the front dial here, what I'm doing is I'm setting how much over or underexposed I wanna go. So I'm gonna set that to two, so it'll be plus and minus two. And then with the rear uh, wheel, what I can do is I can set it exactly how it's gonna shoot. So on this camera, I can actually say three F, which is three frames. In other words, uh, one that's correct, one that's over, one that's under. Or I can say negative two, so it'll shoot the correct one and then underexpose and underexpose or I can say plus two, shoot the correct one, overexpose and overexpose. So it has some options there that are really nice. And then I can also set it to off, which turns off the bracketing. So to turn on and off the bracketing, push the bracketing button and then use these dials on the front to set that up. So I'm gonna put it on the normal three shot mode, which says three F. So this is going to over and underexpose things by two stops. So this first shot, that's correct. This guy right here, it's underexposed, and then one that's overexposed. And we can take a look at this, and you can see that it works perfectly. And this camera, again, I had it in aperture priority mode just like we did on the Canon. Well, the other thing I wanna to talk to you about is a different kind of bracketing, and that is flash exposure bracketing. And it works really, really well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw a flash on this camera, and we're gonna do that next. All right, well, I've added a flash, and to make this really work, I've had to do some things. And so behind me, you can see that uh, we've actually added a big light behind the curtain. And what we're doing is we're emulating what it might be like if you had something that was backlit, like a sun coming through the window uh, of a house or maybe a sunset, something like that. So we have this really bright light coming in through the window. And I wanna show you uh, what this looks like. So the first shot, I'm gonna turn off the flash. I'm just gonna take a picture with no flash. And with that shot, you can see that the pig and all the stuff, it's just totally black. It's underexposed. And so what we need to do is we need to add a flash. And so we add some light to balance out the scene. So I'm gonna turn on this flash. Now what I've done here is now I'm gonna go into the menu. And in the menu, I'm gonna go back to that bracketing and flash menu, that's the pencil and E. And then when I go in there, I'm gonna change my auto bracketing to flash only. And so I'm taking it from auto exposure only just to flash only because I wanna just keep that back curtain consistent and then change how much flash I'm getting on the front. So now that I have that, I'll hit okay. I'm gonna take my three shots. And so let's go ahead and do that now. So one, two, three. Now when we look at these shots, you can see the huge difference that makes from having the pig and all the junk in the front of the curtain totally black to now it has an exposure and we have three different flash exposures to choose from. One that's uh, right on, one that's over, and one that's under. And that way we get a good exposure if the one that's correct wasn't actually correct. And it works pretty cool. Well, let's try that same thing, but now we're gonna use a Canon camera. Well, now I've added a flash to my Canon and I'll show you how to do the bracketing with the Canon. So just to show you, uh, it's the same thing as before. I'm gonna take a picture and you can see that the pig and everything else is totally underexposed just like it was with the Nikon because we have all that strong backlight and nothing to balance it out. So we're gonna turn on our flash. Now on the 5D Mark II here that I'm using, I can go into the menu and the third wrench over that you see here. I can go to the external speed light control. I'll hit the set button. I'll go to my flash function settings. Then I can go down here where it says FEB, that's flash exposure bracketing. I'll hit set. Then I'm gonna do this plus and minus two stops. I could go all the way up to three stops, but I'm gonna keep it at two. So I'll uh, hit that. And now you'll see on the back of the flash, it actually has this little bracketing symbol and it says plus zero. And what that means is when I take this first shot, it's going to expose uh, where it thinks it should expose. And then it says negative two on the flash. So I'll take a shot, it's underexposing by two stops, and then plus two, I'll take that shot, and it's saying it's gonna overexpose the flash exposure by two stops. And so it's doing all the bracketing for us. Now the cool thing is, if you don't have the external speed light control built into your Canon, you can actually just do this on the flash itself. So on the back of your 580EX2, hit the set button twice, and you can see that there's this bracketing symbol, then I can just roll the dial to put it where I want it to be. So I could put it up to, let's say, two, and it's going to hit set. Now it's gonna do the same thing. So the first shot is exposed correctly, negative two and plus two. And it even says FB negative 
three, which is the third shot, not negative three stops. And so you can do the bracketing either just on the flash itself or on the camera. And a lot of flashes and uh, camera manufacturers allow you to do that. You can control the bracketing right in the flash. And that's really, really nice. Okay, now that we know about flash exposure bracketing and we know about uh, bracketing in the camera for our normal exposure, there's some other things we need to know about. And so when you're working on a camera like this, really what you need to do is understand a few things. And one is which mode to put your camera on. Now, one of the things that I think is really important is if you're using the auto modes, aperture priority mode, shutter priority mode, uh, one of those, I prefer to use aperture priority mode when I'm doing any bracketing because what will happen is it'll keep the aperture the same value and then uh, increase or decrease the speed of the shutter to do all the bracketing and that keeps my depth of field consistent and so that's the mode I prefer. Now if you don't have a bracketing feature on your camera, some cameras don't, um, but a lot of cameras have a manual mode instead of a bracketing mode and so you can shoot in manual mode and do the bracketing manually and so what you'll do is you'll use the meter inside your camera to set what the exposure should be, take a picture, and then adjust either the shutter or the aperture. I prefer adjusting the shutter until your uh, camera says that you're overexposed by a stop or two or wherever you want to be, take a picture, and then underexposed by a stop or two and take a picture. And that allows you to do multiple bracketing. And if you look at the HDR uh, episode that we shot last week when I was out shooting with the tree and all the irrigation, I was actually shooting in manual mode because I wanted to bracket more than one under and one over. I wanted uh, multiple underexposed and multiple overexposed images. So I shot in manual mode and just used my built-in meter to say I'm right on over over, right on under under, and everything worked out great. Well, there's one more type of bracketing I want to talk about today, and that is focus bracketing. So we're going to set that up and do that next. All right, let's talk about focus bracketing. And focus bracketing is a terrific tool to use when you're shooting macro photography or if you want different options. Maybe you're shooting some images for a stock agency or something like that, and the different focus points might have different meanings. And so you can use focus bracketing to get options to show your clients. So what I've done here is I've set up this very generic scene and uh, what we have here is just a computer and we have a macro lens here shooting really, really tight shot on this keyboard. Now let's pretend this is maybe a plant or something like that where I couldn't actually see through the viewfinder. Well, I know that uh, I'm on the macro uh, setting on my focus. I can look here on my focus uh, ring and see that it's on the very, very closest focus setting, but I'm not quite sure exactly where to focus. Well, if I couldn't look through here to actually take the picture, what I can do, I have my camera set to manual focus mode. Well, I can go in here on the focus ring and I can take a shot, move that a little bit, take another shot, move it, take a shot, move it, take a shot, and just keep doing that. And as long as my subject isn't moving and my camera isn't moving, the uh, plane of focus is going to shift through this image and we can show you that now and you can see how the focus is changing on each shot. And I know that one of those, I don't know which one, but one of them is going to get the focus that I really, really want. And if you're on macro photography, you really need to take really small steps. Now, the other advantage of focus bracketing allows you, if you can see the viewfinder, for example, I'm going to look through here. I'm going to focus on the closest key here. And there we go. I'll take a shot and one in the middle and then maybe one on the logo of the MacBook Pro. And now I have three shots for a stock agency. So maybe uh, they would use this and say, take command of your team or something like that. And they'd maybe show the command key. Or maybe if it's a shot showing a specific Apple product like a MacBook Pro, well, that would be in focus and the rest of the keyboard would out. Or maybe it's just a generic keyboard. Somebody needs a newsletter that has a keyboard. Well, they don't want either one of those. They want the middle in focus. Well, you have that. And so by bracketing your focus, you have three shots to sell to your stock agency. And depending on the message that somebody wants to send, they have options. And so that's where focus bracketing can really help you out. Well, thanks for the question, Dale. If you're like Dale and you have a question about photography, you can send it to me at askmark at adorama.com. And if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to our videos. That way you won't miss a single episode. Well, get out there and start making some pictures and I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.
for trying. Speed. Uh.